My name is Linda Lucas, and I have felt an overwhelming sense of uncertainty in the last six weeks. And that has manifested itself in my life in terms of feeling like there's this constant undertow. Or maybe it's a riptide that wants to sweep me out into this ocean of worry and despair and sort of um, anxiety. And I have found great comfort in the last three weeks uh, with a verse from Matthew 6. <clears throat> and the verse is, Do not build up for yourself treasures on earth, where, where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. Rather, build up for yourself treasures in heaven, where no moths and no rust destroy and no thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. I know God does not want to have me live in this sea of anxiety and despair, but what he wants me to do is actually minister to those who are feeling that way. And when I build up my treasures in heaven, I know that he wants me to share joyfully my time and my talents. I don't know if it's biblically based, but I love the fact that I can have all the money in the world but I cannot buy an extra hour in my day. And to me, that says my time is my most valuable asset. So if I take my most valuable asset and I take my God-given gifts or my talents and I use those to minister to those right now who are struggling, who are feeling a sense of anxiety and despair, I know that my light is gonna shine brighter in the life of someone right now who only sees darkness. And when my light shines bright, I know that makes God smile. And then I feel like I'm building up my own treasures in heaven. I'm finding myself at a loss for words. The funny thing is, it's so okay. Last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you say, a word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see. My name is Bob Thomas, and uh, one of the circumstances that has uh, been an ongoing challenge in my life is my relationship with my father. Um, to characterize it, it's stormy at best and non-existent at worst, probably for the last 30 years. And it's a long story why. It's an alcohol addiction and broken relationships and uh, a lot of anger. Uh, but earlier this year, uh, I decided I wanted to try to reconnect with my father. I've two boys myself. I'm trying to raise them and thought it would be a good idea to uh, establish a relationship with my own dad. Um, so he lives in Florida and we, I called him and said we were going to be there for vacation and we'd like to see him. And uh, going up to that day, I was pretty scared, uh, but pretty excited about uh, seeing him again. Unfortunately, the night before we were supposed to meet, he called and he canceled. Another rejection for me, but more importantly, it was a rejection of my, my family now. And uh, although it's hard when that happens, and it opens that father hole a little bit wider than it had been before, uh, God keeps telling me to keep moving ahead for my own kids. Um, and the verses that stick with me uh, during those challenges are found in Romans 8. And they say, for you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again but you re received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. And Abba always meant to me, as I understand in English, Papa or Daddy. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. I don't know if I'll ever have a meaningful relationship with, with my dad, but I do know I have a heavenly father. I do know that God wants me to be intimate with him. He wants to be my support and strength 
in this world. And I also know that it's his image that I try to be a model of for my own kids, even though I fail miserably at that many times. So word of God speak, which you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. Be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay. I'm Dana Kavernland. 17 years ago, I had a very difficult conversation with my son, Matt. He pulled me aside and shared with me that he believed that he was a gay man. As a mom, I felt like I had failed and what had I done wrong? And maybe it was I was a single mom and not raised him upright. I have struggled with this for so many years. I've been an angry lioness wanting to attack anybody who who even spoke negatively in any way about gay people. But through the years, this verse has held me tight, held me uh, accountable to God and not to myself and my own issues. Let me share this with you. It's from Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Over the years, I've come to quit trying to change Matt or make him something that I think he should be. I have learned how to relinquish to God and the Holy Spirit, Matt's precious soul and his own spirit, praying always that the Holy Spirit would work a work in Matt's life and bring Matt to a knowledge and an understanding of who God is, and that through that knowledge and understanding, a work could be done in Matt that might be healing and renewing for him. It's not been an easy journey, but God constantly is tapping me on the shoulder, reminding me, Dana, this isn't about you. This is about Matt, and your job is to love him and treasure him and let God do the work. I can't do it. So this verse has held me close to God through those trying times. I'm finding myself in the midst of you beyond the music. Beyond the noise And all that I need Is to be with you And in that quiet I hear your voice Word of God speak Would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty Still I know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. What a God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty. Be still I know that you're Word of God speak. 